what it is, what's happening. Welcome back to the channel. I know there's some regulars on there. Got a few things going on. Some people like to watch uh, people unbox stuff. I'm going to unbox these right here. These are our long radius arms for this Bronco. But something interesting that uh, I found, uh, I guess, about two hours ago. So last night, I had to run up north, about 50 miles. Uh, a buddy of mine bought a car, and he needed to move from literally next door to his house. He bought the car, a car that was, uh, bought a 53 uh, Packard, and one wheel was locked up, and it couldn't move the car. So I took the roll back up. I had to go up there to pick a Bronco up anyway. So I said, well, I'll come over and move the car over to your driveway. Truck run fine. You know, it's, an old, it's, it's my 93 Super Duty with a 7.3 IDI diesel in it. Drove up, run fine. Truck running a couple hours, you know. No problem. Stopped at the yard, loaded up this other Bronco, started to head home here with this other Bronco. Uh, it's a customer truck that I did a bunch of work on. Uh, I just need to bring it home, charge the battery, check over a couple things, and then deliver it to him. He's got the money to pay me. Start riding home. All of a sudden, temperature... Temperature's been fluctuating for about the last couple weeks. I've noticed it. It'll get a little bit past middle and then drop back down. And it, it's been doing this for a little while, and I keep my eye on it. Now, that rollback, I've owned it for about 16, 17 years. That truck, if that thing, the belt ever gets wet, it blows the belt right off it. So you have to watch going through standing water or, you know, any kind of water on the road that don't splash up real heavy, it'll blow the belt off. So I actually keep a spare serpentine belt in one of the toolboxes on the rollback. So I turned on this back road, started heading down the road, and I noticed that the steering was real stiff. And I'm like, uh-oh. Now that truck has hydro boost brakes, so the power brakes run off the power steering. I noticed I didn't have any power brakes. And I looked down, and the temperature was just going like this. I went, uh-oh. So I managed to get it into a parking lot, shut it off. It blew the belt off. Antifreeze everywhere. Eh, don't see anything leaking. I let it cool down. I go ahead. And I put I actually put the spare belt on it because the belt that was on it was soaking wet. So I thought, eh, let me put the, the dry belt on. Get the belt back on it, fire it up. Everything seems fine. Head on down the road. I get about a half mile down the road, and it's just smoke coming out from underneath the hood. I'm like, man. And I'm watching the temperature, and it's 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 more than three quarters up. I'm like, man, I don't like this. Pull it over, check it. I sit on the side of the road for a half hour, fire it back up. I go a few miles. I do this on and off thing for uh, quite a few miles, and uh, it's just not running cool. And I'm like, what's going on with this truck? I've got no heat. That was another thing that bugged me, no heat. So I'm thinking, now I didn't blow the belt back off of it anymore after that. So I'm like, did the water pump impeller stop working what's going on with this thing no heat it's running hot you could actually when i would shut the truck off you could hear the water gurgling it was boiling just, man something's wrong so i called my sister because she lived close by to where i was at i said hey look i'm just gonna park this thing in your driveway and catch a ride home because i'm not gonna burn this thing up i'm not gonna burn the motor up because something, something's going on so this morning i went down to down i went and grabbed the thermostat and gasket i threw a new water pump i had a water pump on the shelf Gather some tools up, head on down. First thing I decided to do was, I'm going to go ahead and pop the thermostat out and take a look at it. Well, on, on that truck, you got to pull the alternator, pull the alternator bracket, and uh, there's a big bracket that holds the fuel filter housing. Get that all out of the way. Then I can actually physically take the thermostat housing off. Well, I get the thermostat housing off and uh, found my problem right away, which is kind of interesting, actually. The thermostat actually just came apart. And to be fair, this thermostat's been in there. Man, if I had to guess, it's probably been in there at least 12 years. I think 12 years ago, I put a radiator, and I think I put hoses and thermostat on it. And I believe it was 12 years ago. But I thought that was pretty interesting. So the thermostat actually physically came apart. So I put a thermostat in the truck, and um, so she lives about 25 miles from here. Run all the way home. No issues. Truck run fine. So, thermostat was the issue this time. Simple fix. Took a few minutes. But uh, let's get into a little bit of Bronco content today. So, these arrived. I actually got lucky. They showed up this morning before we left to go after the rollback. Um, let's open them up. Find our uh, trusty uh, razor blade here. Let's, let's see what these... Uh, $300 eBay 
long radius arms look like. They took about a week to get here. Let's see what they look like. The box has seen a little bit more uh, beaten around. You can use your open the other way, but that's all right. Let's see what we've got in the box. Oh, they're packaged well. And these are $300 eBay long radius arms. They don't look too bad. It's got all the hardware and drop rackets. They don't look too hateful. So once we get the brakes done, um, then we'll do the lift kit and we'll install these and uh, I'll share some content on uh, installing these bad boys when we get around to it. So now we're going to uh, gonna work on the front of this Bronco. Now I did say in an earlier video that I was going to change out the spindle in the uh, hub and everything because this has an oddball style on it. I'm going to recant that statement because we're not going to do that right now. I It's been a long, long time since I've changed one of these over from the style that this has, which is this style rotor here that doesn't have the hat on it where the lock and hub would be. Instead, the lock and hub is this entire part right here, which is kind of like a Ford Ranger and the Ford Explorers were in the uh, late 80s, which is the way this is. The reason I'm not going to switch it over right now is um, you got to change this whole this whole uh, knuckle, and I'd forgotten about it. This has six bolts to hold the spindle on, where the other style has five, which means this here bolt pattern is different, so the other spindle won't fit. Plus, you got to change the axle shaft because this outer stub shaft is shorter on this style. So we're just going to go ahead and put it back together the way it was, but we're going to cut the rotors, repack the bearings. Which brings me to what I wanted to talk about in this video. Now, a lot of guys, I've talked about this on the other Bronco that I just put together last year, and, or the year before last. The only time you can service that bearing, which is inside this spindle, is when this spindle is removed from the knuckle. There's a bearing in there. There's a couple of seals in there. The only time you can service it is when this is removed. Now, the reason I removed it is I got rid of our dust plate. Our dust plates were rotted out, which is a common problem on the East Coast, pretty much with anything. These dust, these dust shields on the inside, these things here, they rust out. Yes, you can buy them and you can replace them, but hear me out for a second. The reason I don't put these back on, on stuff that I'm going to actually use, rocks and junk gets stuck between here and the rotor. I've had it happen more than once. You know, you leave the trail and you get out on the highway and you're like, what is that god-awful noise? And you find out it's a rock jammed in, in this stupid dust shield against a rotor. So since this truck is going to probably be beach truck, light wheeling, that kind of stuff, we're going to get rid of that. We're not going to put them on. They rotted out. I'm not going to replace them. I found that if I leave them off, never have a problem with the brakes. Never, You know, they, some guys say, oh, they help bring air in to cool them, all that. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, whatever. That's fine. They do. You're right. But for a wheeler, a wheeler, a truck you're going to wheel, a truck you're going to use, it's probably going to see off-road as much as it takes to get to drive to the trail. Leave them all. Throw them in the trash because you're going to cause yourself a problem. So while we got it apart, we're going to replace this seal which goes right here on this axle and that seal goes up against this spindle and it keeps garbage from going into here this one's all cracked up now i've said it before i've said it a hundred times if not a thousand times rock auto rock auto rock auto got these seals for three dollars a piece can't beat it um yeah i had to wait a couple of days but that's okay because I had to wait on brake pads and some other stuff anyway and there was other stuff going on in the shop that i was not going to it didn't bother me anyway because I had other things going on. I wasn't working on this. So I had time to wait. So we ordered these seals, uh, center front brake pads, something else. 
but I did forget to order new pins that hold the caliper on, but we'll just get them local. They're not that much money. So next is uh, we're gonna go ahead and install our spindle, which just goes on, as long as I don't mess the seal up. Like so. Pretty simple, but like I said before, the only time you can service any of that is when it's apart. Now I clean up this outer edge right here and I put a little bit of grease on that as well so that the next time you need to take it apart, you don't have to beat and bang on it for an hour and a half. Now actually, as crusty as this thing may look, this actually all came apart really easy. I don't think it's been apart before. Uh, it looks to have original ball joints in it, which is all tight. The steering link is all tight. Um, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Like I said, later on down the road when I gotta do ball joints and stuff, that's when I'm gonna change this the axle shaft, the spindle, and everything to update it to the better style so I can put better hubs on it and get away from that setup there. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and just leave it alone. I don't have enough parts laying around. I'm sure I'll buy a parts truck here in the future, and I'll burn all that out of a parts truck, and I'll have everything here. So, and actually, I might have the stuff because I saved a bunch of this twin I-beam stuff when I moved. Uh, I did find another third member for one of these over in the other building this morning when I was looking for some parts. So I may have, actually might just have all the stuff here. It's just a matter of where is it at. But for today, and the fact that we want to get this thing, we get this project moving, we'll go ahead and just put it back together, grease everything up. We're going to get ready and cut the rotors right now. We're going to ready to mop them up on the uh, brake lathe over there, cut the rotors, and um, we can just keep right on moving. So look, I'm going to uh, end the video on that today. Uh, and I'll pick up next week when we have a lot of this back together and it on the ground. A uh, set of plug wires and plugs came in. So we're going to give this thing a tune-up so we can get this thing off the DMV and get some tags on it. And then we can start the fun stuff. Six-inch lift, long radius arms, set of 35s. This thing ought to be pretty cool. Uh, then we're going to do a couple wheeling trips with it. And then um, hopefully, as long as the 460 runs good, which I know the motor runs good, but I want to make sure that everything works wiring-wise. Um, all that pans out good for 60 time. How's your boy? Catch me on the next one. We'll get into something else.